everyone good morning i'm a little bit fagged out because <laughs> i actually attended this um event hosted by google where the google summer of code mentors and students come together just like a hangout last night and i got home really late and then i had to wake up very early to be here <laughs> right on time so i'm like sorry about the door face <laughs> so today i'm going to be talking to you about the open source design movement in Africa by Open Source Community Africa. My name is Peace Ojeme, but I have a nickname, Perry, that I always like a lot of people to call me. I'm a design contributor at Sugar Labs. Uh, I'm also leading the design team at Open Source Community Africa. I advocate greatly for accessibility, inclusion, and open source, specifically open source design. You can find me on Twitter, Peace underscore Ojeme, O-J-E-M-E-H. Okay, let's kick start. Africa. Um, the first thing I want to say, and I want everyone to take home today, is that Africa is not a country. I was in France last year, and someone walked up to me at the museum. I was like, you're from Africa, right? Do you know Philip? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Africa is a huge continent made up of so many people. I'm from Nigeria. <laughs> Who is Philip? We have so many Philips in Nigeria. So, like, there's always this misconception about Africa, it being a very small space with a little group of people that know each other. So, yeah, please, Africa is not a country. It's actually, like, a huge continent made up of over one billion people. So it's not possible for me to know Philip. <laughs> in Africa, we have um, 57 countries with a population of over 1 billion people. Now, out of these 57 countries, instead of talking about how diverse Africa is, I'm going to be using Nigeria as a case study just to drive home how much diversity we have over there in Africa. So Nigeria is where I'm from. In Nigeria, we have over 250 ethnic groups, and we speak over 500 languages. It's that diverse. And then we have over 2 million people. I think the four of us right here, from, we are actually four from Nigeria, but we are from different parts of Nigeria. I and Samson, the, the dark guy, we are from the, south part, the southern part of Nigeria, Ada is from the eastern part, and Blad is from the northern part. So like, we actually speak four different languages. The only language we have in common is English. So yeah, Nigeria is that diverse. And out of this, out of this um, population, we have 60% of this population almost 60 percent of this population as youths. Youths just leaving high school, those getting into the university, just, just finishing from the university. And then in Nigeria, Nigeria has always been this oil first country where you have to actually study engineering, gas or petroleum to be actually seen as someone who is actually making progress in the society. So if you are at home, always on your computer or your phone, my parents used to tell me I'm very lazy. <laughs> See me on my computer. It's like, it's like you're wasting your life, apparently, because you're supposed to be studying engineering. And then if you're not studying engineering, you should be studying medicine or law. So outside this field, it's like, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> like, you're just wasting yourself. So that's like the whole notion. But then in the last couple of months, a lot of youths have been pushing from the oil first into technology. So most youths right there in Nigeria and Africa are getting to come into technology, learn about tech, learn how to code, learn how to design. And then you find majority of those ones actually from fields that are not related to computer science. I actually just finished from the university. I studied microbiology. And now I'm designing. You find a ton of people like that back there in Nigeria who did not study computer science but are currently now into the world of tech. So the knowledge itself is like, People are trying to grab it. And then there used, to be the, there used to be a time back then where you have this bridge between developers and designers. Designers used to have this very, 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 very small group. And then we have a lot of developers. But in the last few couple of years and months, the, the population between the designers and developers are kind of like measured up. People are beginning to appreciate design and begin to know that actually design is quite important. I wouldn't say even more important than code, but it's like really, really important. So people are actually beginning to actually understand that and they're actually starting to get the whole idea of design. But then we have this problem 
of people who actually know about design and people who actually know that as a designer you can contribute to open source too. In, um, in Africa, we get a lot of people like this. You should take note of this Twitter hand because you're going to see her later on in this talk. Getting really surprised when you talk about open source designs. Like, the few ones I know about open source feel like it's just for code contributions. So I'm a designer, open source, nah, it's not for me. So they get really surprised when you talk about open source design. And then one thing about Nigeria is most of the techies are very, very willing to learn. So they come, crowd your DMs on Twitter, tag you, asking you what open source design is. And they all want to like try to get into the space and really understand what it is. So what Oscar is trying to do in Africa is increase the awareness of open source at the same time making it possible to actually tell others that open source is not just about code contributions but it also includes that minority group like designers and documentation Bolaji here is leading the documentation team back there in Africa so we actually like kind of like include everybody and different ways we actually do that is we host meetups and workshops where we tell people about open source about open source about open source design and documentation and then we kind of like link them up to organizations that actually accept design contributions. Starting up with open source, um, I said out at 2017 actually, I said out with an organization that actually did not appreciate design contributions. So I have to go through really long dialogues to actually propose a design change and then you get the very technical maintainer saying it's not important. After series of months of conversation on why this has to change or why we have to actually have a sprint or something. So like most, some of these organizations, open source organizations still aren't still like really open to designers. So we kind of like try to guide designers from Africa on how to actually start contributing to organizations that actually accept design contributions. And if you want to go into the organizations that are kind of like difficult to get into, ways to actually go around it and then drop your contribution. So uh, we actually also link them, link them up to open source projects. Currently, we have about 15 to 20 designers who are like, really willing to actually get into open source and start working on open source projects. We started out Open Source Community Africa in 2018, so it's like barely two years, and we've covered over five countries in Africa and over 11 cities. And each of those cities actually hosts different meetups where they talk about open source, onboarding people into open source, open source design, documentation, and also code. Now, this month, I almost said next month. <laughs> it's actually funny because it's like really close. We're actually hosting the first open source conference in Africa called the Open Source Festival. And we are hosting the first sustained summit also in Africa. So it's like a three days um, festival where we have the Sustain Africa conversation on how to actually sustain open source in Africa since it has come to stay. And then the remaining two days are actually for the conference. So yeah, I don't know, did you remember Abigail from the previous? So Abigail is actually giving a talk on designers can be open source, open sourcers too. So Abigail this year actually um, became a Google coding mentor from actually learning about open source and she has made tremendous progress since then. So she's coming to the festival to actually tell all the designers about her journey so far and how she's been able to tackle being um, an open sorcerer in that really minute um, circle. The goal of Oscar is actually to onboard as much open sorcerers, so it is the word, designers especially, and then like those just in the minority group getting them to understand that open source is not just about contributing code. It actually goes beyond that. If you are a designer, we are here for you. You can find us um, on Twitter, the Open Source Community Africa. You can find a handle there. Then this is to get more information about the festival, festival.oscarafrica.com. Merci.
questions, yeah. So if anybody's got any questions for the questions, if you could repeat the question um, <coughs> before you answer. Oh, okay. For the microphone. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we still have, we still, okay, I have to repeat the question, right? Okay, oh, I'm sorry, it's coming in. No, so it's about gender balance in, uh, in Africa. Oh, gender balance in Africa, in technology, right? Yeah, we, stu we actually still have this whole gender balance issue. That's why you have um, communities like She Code Africa, um, 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 the other one, uh, women, in, women in Tech. Yeah, we have that. That's like a Google program. So, so there's still this more guy, more male figure than female. So, another thing Oscar is trying to do is bridge a gap, and that's why in our festival we actually had like. 300 tickets for the festival dedicated to just female technologists and then we actually gave them sponsorship so they can actually come to the event so yeah there's still that gender gap in africa a very huge one Uh, I would say um, the narrative is actually changing because the generation of our parents, they all, all always feel like you have to actually study engineering because the country itself is actually like an oil first country. So if you're not doing engineering, it's like, but then there are a few persons who have gone into tech and then they've been like really successful. Other people say, I'm like, okay, if I can do this and be this successful, why not? And then they all like, start getting into it. Um, so you mentioned that there were, you were trying to pick the open source project that would accept uh, the design contributions. Uh, would you like to name a few that were particularly welcoming? Uh, yeah, so um, I actually contribute to Sugar Labs. At as at that time when I said contributing, it was really difficult to actually onboard designers, but now it's quite easy because it's like I've been there and then I just get them in. Then Open Collective is another um, organization that actually accepts good design contributions. Then on Open Design um, website, you can actually see a bunch of <laughs> design organizations that actually accept design contributions. Yeah. Microbiology. Microbiology. <laughs> um, how the hell did you <laughs> find open, uh, well, open source software and, and design? I'm curious. So I would say um, I'm from that typical Nigerian home that my parents actually wanted me to study medicine. And then it was like I had to stay at home for like three years trying to tell them that I have no interest in the health department. I, I don't study medicine. I had to stay at home for three years. But when I, in the end, after the whole back and forth, they actually made me still go to the university to study microbiology. But when I got to school, I started hanging out with meetups. So one thing, in, one thing very common in Nigeria is that we have these small meetups like Oscar, there's some, um, the GDG, and the rest of them having like smaller meetups in school talking about technology. So in my first year, I actually started attending some of this meetup, and then I attended one design sprint when they gave us like they gave us this persona, and then they, told us, they gave us a problem and told us to actually draft out a solution. And then it was like really cool. And I started attending meetup. I started taking courses on Udacity. Everything was kind of like personal. I started taking like buying courses. I go to school in the morning, at night, I'm like on my computer trying to learn. <laughs> and then when I was done with school last month, I was like, Dad, I'm done living your life. <laughs> it's time to take up my, to 
So that's actually how I took the shift to technology. And then I knew about Sugar Labs from Samson, where I met him like the first month I actually started learning about technology. So he told me about his Sugar Labs, and then I started making little contributions, and then it just blew up from there. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, it's kind of a hub for this kind of stuff. Are there any other places in Africa where there's kind of like a community developing any specific Sorry, community? I I didn't quite get the question. So Samson is actually the name of a person. That's Samson there. I don't know if that's what you're actually asking. No, no, no. I think you, you were actually asking about like if there's like hubs. Yeah, or is there other, yeah, other yeah, places yeah, yeah. where there's a lot happening where you're thinking, well, it sounds like you're concentrating on Lagos, maybe. It's yeah, I think, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, I think Lagos is, Lagos is, is, sh oh, Lagos. Okay. Lagos is the biggest because of it's the biggest city in Africa, mm -hmm. right? The, the population is so huge, and it's um, because of Nigeria influence with the, the continent 24 cents for a lot of organizations like Google, Microsoft, you know, all the Silicon Valley companies coming to like have offices. But in terms of like communities, I'm, I know for sure that there's big in um, Nairobi, Kenya, there's um, one in Egypt, there's uh, one in South Africa. Um, I think um, Rwanda is also doing really big. Um, that's, yeah, I would say like a lot of countries, but the fact that um, Lagos or Nigeria seems to be the, the always most top or discussed country um, is due to the fact that we're like a lot of people with a, a lot of interest in technology. Four minutes before the changeover, we can finish now. Or if people want to, you know, to keep discussing things, up to you. Okay. Do you have any collaboration with other institutions? Um. Outside yeah. Nigeria? Outside Nigeria. Yeah, we actually have. Um. Let's go to the map. So we have um a chapter. We actually call them chapters. We have a chapter in Sierra Leone. This is Nigeria, it's most places. We have another one in Kenya. We have in Ethiopia too. So like the goal of Oscar is actually to get out to so many African countries as possible, just to start up. So once someone reach out to us from each of those countries, we just kind of like onboard them and then they kick up with meetups. Yeah, I think we have smaller communities in school. We call them school chapters, yeah. I don't know, I'm not sure if that's like an answer to your question. Okay, by inclusion, I actually mean inclusion in design, like those with disabilities and the rest of them, yeah. Not like general, then on a more general level, bringing, balancing the gender between male and female, basically. Okay, so um, my organization, Sugar Labs, we actually have this desktop environment for kids where we actually take inclusion and accessibility very seriously. We think about kids with color blindness, those that have like mostly um, impairment seen. So when creating our components, our design component, we'll make sure that we actually have components that actually f suits this particular set of people, yeah.
a follow-up question to that. So how do you ensure that? How do you check for that? Or how do you make sure that it is acceptable for people with disabilities to that? Okay, so um, we come up with like um, certain options and then there are people who actually go and do the actual testing. So in Nigeria, we actually don't have so many people actually using um, the desktop in Nigeria. We have only very few schools. So we go to those schools, act see actual students use it and how they react to it, then get the data, try to reform it. Then. The what? I know the OpenStreetMap community in Africa is quite... Uh, oh, yeah, I saw, I saw someone from there. I think it was yesterday. I actually just heard about it yesterday for the first time. Yeah, we got talking yesterday. Oh, yeah, when you come to power, it's actually like a big problem, very big problem in Nigeria. I'll, I'll use myself as a case study. So I used to stay around school when I was in school, and then we had power issues. So I have to go to like several hubs a bit far from school to actually get my computer charged. And in the middle of the night, it goes off. And then I start looking for like a neighbor that has a gen, <laughs> then to charge my system, then before I actually got a gen. So in... in Nigeria, the part where I stay, you actually have to have like a support system for power. And then we have um, really expensive internet. You, you get to spend like a thousand, one hundred and fifty dollars on internet monthly just to make sure that you are like always online. So it's like the internet consumption is crazy expensive. Then power too is not. But then there are some areas that actually have good power supply. Yeah. Power is actually, um, I wouldn't say a general African problem, it's just kind of for some reason still particular to some part of Nigeria. And if you want to stay in a place where you, you know, receive 24 hours power per day, you, you <laughs> should be ready to start paying, like, you know, um, start paying for a partner that is like expensive as San Francisco. Or if you want to, like, have access to, like, 24 hours internet or, or a great um, you know, Mbps, you pay a lot. So the point is um, to try to live a very comfortable lifestyle with internet and power in some part of the country, Nigeria, you really need to be... On box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's going to be the last question because we said you are change over. So thank you very much. Peace for a really interesting... Oh, thank you. No, I just wanted to rephrase or remind you guys that Africa is my country, please. <laughs> <laughs>